Good morning, Ravens. It's good to have you here for uh, to meet together again for chapel. Today, we're blessed to have our very own Mike Thigpen uh, sharing God's word with us and uh, the great worship set coming up as well. Let me share uh, just uh, one announcement that I have for Thursday. This coming Thursday, 11 o'clock right here, will be our last uh, panel discussion on speaking out against racial injustice. So uh, we hope you uh, participate in that. We hope that you have sent in questions uh, to be answered by the panel. Uh, it should be a good time there. I'm going to start today by reading from uh, Psalm 115, verse 1. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness. Would you pray with me this morning? Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for this time that we can be together, uh, even in this virtual way. Father, we pray that you speak to us, that you open up our hearts and our minds, that we might hear what you have to say to us. And, and Father, on our uh, spiritual journey, Lord, that you would take another step and, and help us, Father, in our transformation. Father God, we love you. We thank you. And it is indeed all to you that we give glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, and you. Welcome to Chapel. We're glad to be here and be able to worship with you guys, and hope that you can receive it on your end.
Praise God. Praise God. Good morning, AU. We're so glad to be here and to be able to gather together once again uh, for this chapel experience. And so I am um, thrilled to be with you this morning. Um, I appreciate the worship team that just led us. Wow, how great thou art. Um, it's good to know that in these times that God is still great. Uh, that when we face difficulties, that God is still in control, and that there's nothing that we are encountering today that's too hard for God. And so today, as we would go to the scriptures and we would go to the Lord, um, my heart is um, in the same space as, as many of you. Uh, many of you are in a space of just exhaustion uh, from all that's going on uh, in the world. And um, I'll be honest, man, I am in the place of tiredness. Uh, this weekend, I had the privilege of sharing at uh, at my home church, Eastside Church of God, and got to uh, share um, um, the thought of, of being tired, what to do when we're tired. And so uh, this morning, I know that many of you are in that space where you're tired, you're tired of all that you see, all that you feel. And though you may get a full night's rest, um, you are still experiencing some of uh, the tiredness that comes along with it, because this is not a sleep issue. It's not about sleep deprivation. No, this is about being tired from all the things that are going on in the world around us. But this morning, I pray that the scripture will bring you some hope uh, that it would offer you the opportunity to see God is still at work in your life. And so this morning, I want to share with you from uh, St. John, the 21st chapter, and um, and in this passage, we encounter uh, one of my favorite disciples. His name is Peter. And um, if you know anything about me, you know that uh, I like Peter because Peter has up and down days. Peter uh, is much like many of us that um, as things are happening, uh, Peter is responsive to those things that are taking place. And he is always responding uh, to the environment. And Peter is having a difficult time. He had just not too long ago denied Jesus three times. And he had uh, said that he didn't even know Jesus. But in this passage, we're experiencing Peter in his place of in-between. And I like to call it the in-between place. And many of us were in that in-between place, a place where we're uh, trying to figure out what's next. What's my next uh, uh, space in God? Uh, where do I go next? I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling exhausted. I'm feeling fatigued from all the things that I'm currently experiencing. God, when are you going to show up? When are you going to come through? And Peter has this type of response. So I'm going to share the scripture with you, and I'm actually going to share my screen so that you'll be able to read along with me. The Bible says this in uh, St. John, uh, the 21st chapter. It says, after Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the two sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into um, the boat. That night, they caught nothing. Again, I want to read that. It says, they went together, got in the boat, but that night, they caught nothing. I think it's so important that we uh, acknowledge the fact uh, that first, that Peter was a fisherman. This was his profession. This is what he did for a living. This is one thing that Peter knew how to do well. He was found fishing when Jesus found him. And so Jesus invited him and had a dialogue that he could understand. And he invited him to become a fisher of men. And so as he was invited to become a fisher of men, he knew that the concept of fishing. So he knew that he was called to go and reach those who were just swimming through life without direction and bringing them into Jesus. But in this in-between place, uh, Peter had denied Jesus and he is going through, I want to say, the emotions and he is actually feeling like he wants to return back to the thing that he knows, the thing that was st um, st um, stabilizing for him, the thing that gave him a peace or gave him uh, some comfort. So he was returning back to his practice, turning back to his former uh, 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 lifestyle, his former way of doing things, something that he knew he could do well. He may have felt that he was not being a good example or was not being the best disciple. And so I may not be able to be a good disciple, but I know I know how to fish. How many 
of you are facing that right now, that in this time of exhaustion and fatigue and tiredness, that you may uh, be going back to some habits that you had before because you knew how to navigate those things well. You knew how to handle those things well and you were handling them on your own. The things that were before Christ, as we would say, BC, the things that are, are, are tried or that tried you, the things that tested you, the things that you were moving through, the things that you knew how to handle. And so Peter's there. He said, I'm going fishing. But he didn't go fishing alone. He also went with other disciples. So he gets on this boat with them and they begin to fish. Now, remember, Peter is a master fisherman, but that night they caught nothing. Imagine trying to do the thing you used to do, but catching nothing. I know that's got to be some of the emotions we're feeling right now, that you are in that space and you feel like you are catching nothing. You're trying to do everything that you can. You're trying to control the narrative. You're trying to control the story. But in the midst of trying to control everything, you find that you have no control over any of it. And so all night, Peter and the guys, they were fishing. And they were casting down their nets. They were putting them in the water, pulling them out, and they were catching nothing. I'm sure in the time that they were there, they were catching boots and all sorts of other things that were not anywhere close to fish. But they were picking up these elements that were not what they were looking for. I want to say that to you this morning. Maybe you've been fishing and you're finding things that you weren't looking for. Maybe you're finding relationships that you weren't looking for. Maybe you're finding time, ways to occupy your time that you weren't looking for. You're looking to be filled. You're looking to be uh, full, but you find yourself empty. And so Peter was in that space. And the Bible goes on to say that early in the morning, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, having you any fish, they respond, they answered no. Their response was no, because in, in this time where Peter is uh, aiming to give them uh, um, some hope through fishing, uh, they had did everything that they can do, but they caught nothing. And here is some stranger on the shore who's saying, hey, have you caught anything? What, what, what have you been doing all night? Have you got anything on the boat? And the response was nothing. I don't know about you, but many of us feel like we have nothing. We have no hope. We have nothing coming out of, of what we've been doing. We've toiled all night. We've worked all night and we have nothing to show. But early in the morning, and I want to encourage somebody with that, that early in the morning, Jesus is standing on the shore. And though you may not identify him, though you may not seek him, he is there. I want to let you know that in the midst of our political landscape, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of all that's going on in our world, that Jesus is standing on the shore and he is ready to engage you. He's ready to activate the things that you've been looking for. I want to let you know, you will not find what you're looking for on the ocean, not in the sea. You will not find it there, but you're going to find it in Jesus. And so Jesus asked the question, have you caught anything? And they answered, no. He responds to them. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. I love this phrase right here because the question is, is were they fishing on the left side of the boat or were they fishing on the wrong side of the boat? Was it the left side or the wrong side? I'm not sure what he was saying here, but I want to say that many of us, when we're fishing, we tend to fish on the wrong side of life. We're fishing to the things that are familiar, and the Lord calls us away from so many familiar things to bring us into a place that is strange from us, but when things get chaotic and when things get difficult, it's our tendency, it's our human nature to want to draw back to the things that are familiar, the things that we can work with, the things that we have control over, the things we can manipulate, the things we can change, but he's calling us into strange, unfamiliar places. And so he says, cast your net on the other side of the boat, on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because a large number of fish. Verse seven, then the disciple who loved, loved excuse me, whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. I love this declaration. There's got to be a moment when you acknowledge that the things, something 
things that are happening in your life that the Lord is orchestrating, that he's working those things out, that he's moving on your behalf. It's not because of the uh, catch of the fish that we need to be able to acknowledge. We need to know that even when things are not going the way that we think they should go, that the Lord is still operating in our lives. He's still moving in our lives. He's still changing things and turning things around in our lives. And so he says, he says, hey, 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 it is the Lord. This is a declaration that John makes. It is the Lord. The Bible says, as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. We got to take a minute there. It's so important that we acknowledge that often when we're going after the things that we want, after the things that we think are going to fix our situation, that we will literally strip down out of our garments. We'll forget ourselves. We'll forget who we are, our identity in Christ. We'll forget all of those things to go after the thing that we think is going to fix the moment. I want to let you know the fish will not fix the moment. Only Jesus can fix the moment. And when Peter knows that Jesus is there, when he knows that Jesus is close, he takes his garments, put it back on, and he jumps into the water. Now that sounds strange to most of you, uh, because most times when we get in water, we take off our garments to get in the water. But no, Peter said, let me dress myself. I forgot who I was. I forgot my identity. I forgot that I'm a royal priesthood, that I am a child of God, that God is doing something in my life. He said, let let me put myself back together. He puts himself together, jumps off the boat and swims to Jesus. Notice that Jesus and Peter always have uh, these, these water moments. <laughs> you remember when Jesus tells Peter to come out and walk on the water. This time he swims in the water, but he's always going to Jesus. I want to let you know, if you're confused about your situation, if you're confused about your circumstance, get to Jesus. If you're confused about what's going to come next, if you're confused about what's going to happen in the world, get to Jesus. If you need peace, if you need joy, if you need hope, get to Jesus. And so Peter says, I'm off of this boat. There's nothing on this boat that's going to help me. There's nothing on this boat that's going to fix it. I got to get to Jesus. Oh man, that's good news today. I want to let you know that if you can get to Jesus, everything will change. If you can get to Jesus, everything will be revealed. If you can get to Jesus, he will fix your circumstances. And so he jumps off of the boat and gets into the water and gets himself to Jesus. The Bible goes on to say, it goes on to say in, in verse eight, it says, the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. Listen to this. I love this. Notice this, that Peter always does extra. <laughs> He's the extra disciple. He's the one who goes to the extent. He's, he's the one who says, man, listen, I know I can just ride on the boat, but I'm going to leave these guys behind. When he walked on the water, nobody else walked on the water with Jesus except Peter. He got off the boat because he wanted to get to Jesus first. I want to let you know, get to Jesus first. And so the Bible goes on to say, it says, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Whoa, man, let's just stop there for a minute. I just want to stop there for a minute. You know why? Because it's important that we acknowledge that the thing that we were looking for, Jesus already has. The thing that you are looking for, Jesus already has. Peter went out to fish, but notice this, Jesus is on the side of the shore and he's making breakfast. Jesus is on the side of the shore cooking a meal. He's already got everything that you need. What are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Where are you looking? I want to let you know, look to Jesus. He is able to do what you need. He's able to meet your need. He's able to comfort you. He's able to heal you. He's able to deliver you. He's able to save you. That even in these times that have been, come, been called unprecedented times, I want to let you know that he is still active. This is not strange to him. These are not unknown times to him. That he is still on the throne. And so they get there and there's fish and there's bread. I can tell you one thing. It's so good to know that, that, that Jesus wasn't just uh, 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 making fish, but he also has some bread. 
Um, uh, where I come from, we would have said we'd have had a nice fish sandwich about this time uh, once we put it all together. Only thing Jesus didn't have was some hot sauce, but I don't know, maybe somebody had some. But here we see this, 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 this activity where Jesus is meeting not just their needs, but the Bible is helping us understand that he is doing exceedingly and abundantly above all they could ask or think. They were thinking fish, but Jesus is like, I got bread. Oh my God, that's good this morning. The Bible goes on to say, it says, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Oh man, that's, we can go deep into that. The reason why this net wasn't torn, because when Jesus sends the fish, we don't lose any. When Jesus sends the fish to your net, you won't lose any. Many of us are worried about what we'll lose, what will get lost in this era or this time period, what we're going to lose. We're losing time. We're losing time with loved ones. We're losing time uh, uh, to spend with family and friends. We're losing time. We didn't go get to go to the graduation. We didn't get to go to the wedding. We didn't get to go uh, to the um, spring trip. We didn't go to get to do Christmas like we did it. We didn't get to do Thanksgiving like we used to do it. We didn't get to do any of these things. I want to let you know, you might think you're missing it right now, but the the Lord has a way of restoring the time and redeeming the time. The thing you think you're missing, the Lord will heal. He will bring about comfort. He will bring about restoration. And that's what God does. He restores. He redeems the time. Whatever you think you're missing, the Lord will redeem it. But you got to get to Jesus. And so Bible goes on to say, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. I'm going to keep going because time is going. The Bible goes on and says, when they had finished eating, I want to let you know that the meal portion with Jesus is so important. The time that you spend with Jesus, do not neglect to spend time with Jesus during all this chaos in the world. The only way you're going to get through this, the only way you're going to be able to conquer your tiredness, the only way you're going to be able to conquer these moments is to get time with Jesus. Because if you can get time with Jesus, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. And so after they had done the meal, this engagement, this, this conversation, this interaction, this time spending, this time of, of nourishment, this time of regaining strength, they have this moment. Jesus then says, we got to do some business. And Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? I believe that when Jesus was, was talking to Simon Peter, he was saying to him, do you love me more than these? Not talking about the disciples, not talking about anything else, but talking about the fish that he just told him to get. He's telling him, hey, do you love me more than what you thought or was seeking to catch? Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? Notice this, that Jesus asked him, Three times, do you love me? And Peter had denied him three times. Hear that. Peter denied him three times, and Jesus asked him three times. I want to let you know that no matter what you've done, no matter the place you've fallen, that Jesus has enough grace for you to come back from that space. I can imagine that even though Jesus, um, Peter got there to Jesus and he was in that meal, there was that anxiety. Have you ever been at a dinner table and you knew there was something that we needed to talk about, but we didn't talk about it right away? And when the topic comes up, you start to feel the shame of what happened before. I want to let you know that there is no shame, that wherever you are, whatever is happening, Happen, that you can come back from that place, that the Lord has enough grace for you, that there's enough grace for your situation. And so he redeems him. He restores him. He brings him back into position. He reinstates him with these questions. 
these three questions that are simple. Do you love me? And so Peter experienced the hurt on the third question, maybe reflecting upon his denial, maybe reflecting upon the past, maybe reflecting upon his past decision. But I want to let you know that he responds. And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. I want to let you know that Jesus was getting ready, getting Peter ready for his big day. We've seen Peter go through a whole lot of things and do a lot of things, but Jesus was more concerned about what would happen in the book of Acts, that on the day of Pentecost, when it was time for Peter to speak, that he would be ready to speak. Some of us are not ready to activate or ready to move forward because we're walking in the shame of yesterday. And Jesus wanted to get Peter ready to let him know that this transformational moment is so essential to your life because on the day when the Holy Ghost has fully come, you will stand up and give witness to the power of God. I want to let you know, no longer do you need to walk in your shame or walk in the exhaustion of this season. Get yourself to Jesus so that you can get restored, so that you can get reinstated, so you can get back in your place, get back in your spot, and you will experience how God wants to use you. God still has a plan. He's still working on your life. He's still doing great things in you. And I know that we don't get to hear that all the time. We don't get to see it all the time. And we don't get to even experience all the time. But guess what? God is at work in your life. He is still working in your life. He's still doing great things in your life. And we don't hear it because guess what? CNN and MSNBC and our Fox, all these other uh, news stations, they're not broadcasting the activity of God. They're not broadcasting how God is moving in the earth. They're not broadcasting that souls are still being saved. They're not broadcasting that people are still being healed, that people are still being delivered, that people are still being set free, that God is still working miracles. They're not broadcasting any of that. But I want to let you know that God is still in control and he is still moving. He is still active in our lives. And there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too hard for him. Whatever you're facing today, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, God is still working for you. Because as much as Peter proclaimed that Jesus, yes, Lord, you know, that I love you. The truth of the matter is, Jesus loves him so much more. And that's the truth for you today. That no matter how much you love God, no matter how you feel about ways you may have disappointed him or let him down or didn't come through for him, he's not concerned about that today. That he loves you. He's concerned about you. He's with you. And he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. This week, I was introduced, or last week, I guess I'll say, was introduced to a song. And this song literally has just blessed my life. Because just like you, I've been tired. I've been exhausted. I've, I've felt the fatigue of life as we've gone through an election, we've gone through racial unrest and, and difficulties. And, and as a black man, I feel that exhaustion sometimes. Not only that, we're battling one of the most difficult diseases that seems like a silent killer. There have been so many losses. And so when we sit there and we start to add up and we start to see all of the problems, we start to see all of the situations, it is so easy for us to become defeated. But I don't want you to be defeated today. But just this week, a good friend of mine, uh, as we were preparing for a service, sent me a song. And this song ministered to the preacher. I want to let you know, as much as I'm encouraging you, I want to let you know I am human too. And I feel those moments. I feel the intensity of the world. I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders at times. And I know you do too. But I want to let you know that God is still on the throne. And this song reminded me of that. And so this morning, I'd like to share that with you. I'd like to share that song. And hopefully it will bring some peace to you. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to pray. 
But listen to the words of this song. May it bless you. that is a song for this season. God turn it around. I love the fact that in the middle of the song, it says that God is doing something right now. And I don't know what God is doing for you right now, but I believe that God is doing something and making a way and moving mountains in your life. And so today I want to pray for you. 
Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word and for the hope that it offers us that no matter where we are, that you are still at work and you are moving. Your word, Lord God, guarantees that you have a plan for us and that this plan is filled with hope and a future, Lord God. And Lord God, your word says, Lord God, even that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Even though it's formed, it won't prosper. And so, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will restore hope in the lives of those who hear. And, Lord God, that you will begin, oh, Father God, to restore joy, oh, Father God, that, they, Lord God, their mourning will become dancing, oh, God, that whatever they find themselves in right now, oh, Father God, that you will provide a way of escape, Lord God, that you would open up doors, oh, Father God, that seem closed, oh, Father God, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we have not room to receive. I pray, oh, Father God, that you would take away, Lord God, the spiritual fog, oh Father God, and the spiritual fatigue, oh Father God, and the tiredness, oh God, and the anxiety, oh Father God, the depression, oh Father God, the cloudiness, oh Father God, and let your sunshine in, oh God. I pray, oh Father God, that you will restore, oh Father God, all doubts, oh Father God, and confusions be dispelled, oh Father God, and restore the hope, oh Father God, to know that you are still in control. Enemy we serve, you notice you are a defeated foe, that everything you're trying has already been defeated, that Jesus died so that your tricks and your traps will be defeated. And so we rest in Jesus. We rest in the hope that he offers. We rest in the peace that he gives. Holy Spirit, come. Do your work. Have your way. You are the acting, moving power of God. And so we call on the Holy Spirit even now to go by sick bedsides and heal, to go into dark, closing rooms and bring people out into the marvelous light. I pray right now that you would lift every depressed spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Lord God, for those who have no direction, that Lord God, you will give them the glimmer of hope, oh God, that they can believe that tomorrow is going to be better than today and the day after will be better than yes tomorrow, oh God. Lord God, that you will do your work in our lives. Holy Spirit, turn it around. Turn it around for us. Turn it around for your people. We have faith. We have hope. And we got the love of Jesus that will walk us through all of the calamities that we might face. I pray for restoration in your body, in your church, in this university, among your people. Thank you for doing it even right now. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. For it's in the strong name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Friends, it's been so good to be with you today. I pray that God will give you continual peace and that he will walk with you every step of the way. I know that you're wondering how you're going to make it. I want to let you know. It doesn't matter because you're going to make it. We thank you so much for tuning in and may God continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.